Welcome to Real Estate Real World, where we talk to the movers, shakers, and leaders that are getting it done right now in the real estate industry and beyond. I'm your host, Marguerite Crespillo, and I started this podcast simply dedicated to calling people about what's really happening in this crazy roller coaster ride of real estate. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and stay up to date on the newest stuff by adding yourself to the list at www.realestaterealworld.com. Now, let's dive into the world of real estate. Hello, it's Marguerite Crispillo, and it's time for Real Estate Real World. And I'm excited about this interview today because I've really watched this young lady grow and blossom over the years. And I remember when she was like not even a mom yet and not even married. And I remember doing a podcast with her years ago. And it's been really fun to just watch her and her life take off. And she's extraordinary on social media among the million other things that she does. Like, I think if she doesn't have 200 million things on her plate, she wouldn't know what to do with herself. So that's okay. We've all been there, right? Us moms trying to pull it all together. So today, my very special guest is Rachel Adams Lee. She's a small town girl making moves. She's a top 1,000 agent in the U.S., a multi-passionate entrepreneur and new mama. She runs four, count them, four, six and seven figure businesses with her hubby and lives life on her terms. She loves helping others talk, tap into their true potential and build the business of their dreams. Facts, positivity is her jam. You can find her snuggled on the couch in yoga pants, hair in a messy bun with her laptop. She's five feet tall, loves all things social media and obsessed with having being the mom that she is as well as an extraordinary wife to her great husband, Ryan. So welcome, welcome, Rachel. I'm so happy to be here. I know I'm excited. I know we've had to, we've had to mix this up a few times because life happens, doesn't it? It sure does. I think it's so funny because when I see people who have all this like perfectly laid out, organized plan and all that, and I'm like, life is what happens when you're busy planning because yeah. you can have this big old master plan. And especially right now, you have three kids under the age of four now. Are they? Yeah, we have a four, four. We have four-year-old Henry, two-year-old Harrison, and one-year-old Hayden. And I love watching a lot of your social media where you show how different their personalities are. Cause as I, I raised six different. kids and yeah. five of them are boys and their personalities are so different to this day. Even now my kids are grown. They're 27. The youngest are 27 and 28 and they couldn't be more night and day. Yeah. I think about all the time, like one of them will like our middle child. So our oldest is like very obedient, listen to the rules. He's a sassy four-year-old. So there's that, but he just, he's a rule follower. And then our middle one is hold my beer. And then he's just <laughs> like climbing on things and looks me in the face and is like, no, I'm like, your brother would have <laughs> never done that. Like, so it's definitely, he is my spirit though in my husband's body. So my husband is five feet or five feet tall. My husband is six, three and tall and skinny and I'm five feet tall and curvy. So he's, but I'm like all the sass. So he's got my personality, but with my husband's body, he's like a little string bean. It's so funny because Jake is our middle child and we called him the Tasmanian devil when he yeah, was, because yeah. he was just wild all over the place. And the funny thing is, I'll never forget. We were at Walmart one time and we lost him in the Walmart. He was like three years old, right? He took off. So the thing is we tested out the code Adam system because they immediately shut down the Walmart, put people at all these stations. And he had just wandered off into the corner and was playing under this little clothing. Rack. <laughs> and John, my youngest would always answer you. If you'd say, Hey, he'd always make a noise. Jake, crickets. So you'd yeah. spend forever trying to hunt him down and figure out where he's at and what he's doing, but they yeah. are my greatest joy. They are my greatest yeah. joy. They're the best thing ever and also exhausting and makes me want to drink wine. So it's fine. 
<laughs> I have a big stash of wine. Trust me, you can come over anytime you want. So now you, on top of being this great mom and you married to the love of your life and you have been building a few different businesses, but how yeah. I've known you primarily has been through real estate yeah. and you got into real estate when 2000, what well, year did you get in? 2012. Yeah, 2012. So I started my business with uh, door knocking and open houses. So I door knocked 200 doors a week and did three open houses every week. So my beginning of real estate was definitely intense. I didn't have people were like your database, your buyers, your sellers. Like I didn't have it. I was like, I don't know what my database is. I've never sold houses before. And I really was like under the impression that once I got my license, everybody would just give me referrals. I thought that's how this worked. And I was like, weird, I have this business card. Where are you? And so I, yeah, I door knocked 200 doors to three open houses every week. And I did that for seven months. It didn't sell any houses for the first four months. So like I questioned if this was the right industry, if I should like just change my whole tune. But I also, at that point in my life, like I was in a really unhealthy marriage. I was doing everything for everyone else. Like I didn't really have direction on what I wanted my life to look like, but I heard that like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and expecting a different result. And so I had to make some changes in my personal life. But then even though I didn't sell any houses the first four months, I ended up selling 39 houses that first year and then a hundred wow. and 123. So three years in, that's when I hit the wall street journals, top 1000 agents in the country. We still have that today. And it's been a wild ride, honestly, Marguerite, like I've had, I've built teams, blown up teams because I did it the wrong way. I've always committed to personal production, but when I decided I wanted to be a mom, I didn't know that we were going to have the fertility struggles that we did. We've had four losses on our journey to make our family. Still yeah. trying to convince my husband for one more, by the way. Oh. Right now it's a hard no. And But I knew that if I was going to have a family, the pace of the d knocking all the doors and doing all the open houses wouldn't work. Being gone every single Friday, Saturday, and Sunday would not work. And I that's when I decided I was going to really start to build through social media. Um, and I'm self-taught. And I really learned about the algorithm. I, I, I thought there was a lot of pressure to be on every platform like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat. And I started with Facebook. And when I really got that dialed in, I then launched my Instagram channel. When I got that launched, I then launched my YouTube. And for me, that was really the best way to be able to figure this whole thing out. Because it was like, it was crazy. Like it was definitely intense. I'm a business I like systems. And so I created a, a system around my social media so that I could truly have what we refer to as the life by design. So it's doing what I want to do when I want to do it with who I want to do it with. And what I love about building a business through social media is I have truly built this whole thing. Like we had over a hundred referrals come through last year through social media for real estate. And I get two types of referrals. I get client and community referrals. So people local wanting to use me and then also realtors around the country. And so I really have been intentional with making sure that every time I get on social, I'm adding value, whether I'm educating someone on something or I'm just entertaining and providing some laughter or making them feel like as a mom, I really share the beautiful, the messy, like all the things about being a working mom. I decided that I really wanted to focus on the working mom angle because that's what I am. And right. I was aware that I might alienate some people because I talk a lot about being a working mom, but I also watch my insights and I know that 77% of my audience is women. So I felt like I was okay with that. So how everyone talks about the algorithms and I always get a little confused and overwhelmed by them, right? Yeah. Is how do you really figure out what those are and what direction to take? I know that a big percentage of my audience is also women. Yeah. I don't think it's quite 77%, but it's definitely a large following are women, but it also varies by the portal. Do you find that as well? Is it different on Facebook versus Instagram versus like TikTok is like, I'm old school. I did all I did was Facebook for a long time. Yeah, now I have sure. Instagram and TikTok, but I'm still, yeah, about I, I still I'm pretty across the board. Like I detract more of a female do dominant audience. The algorithms, I feel like they're this like weird, like confusing, sexy thing where yeah. you're like, I want to be a part of it. I think I want to beat it. So the way that I think about the algorithm is the goal of any social media platform is to keep you on it as long as humanly possible. So whatever you're interested, it's going to give you more of that. So when I was pregnant that I got babies, birth, onesies, pacifiers, and I was interested in that. So it kept feeding me that. Right. right. And the way I want you to think of the algorithm, even to break it down is like tools. 
you can make a post, you can comment on something, you can like something, you can go live, you can do a direct message, you can do an audio message. All of these things are tools within the algorithm. The more tools that you use on a platform, the more eyes that Facebook or Instagram is going to give you on your content. So there is a way to work with the algorithm to train it to give you more of what you want, but also put you more in front of the people who you want to be in front of. And that's really where I got super intentional. And I said, like, how can I add value to my audience? What are they looking for? And so what I really did is I decided that I was going to go and I was going to break my social media down within five different categories. So number one, I was going to talk about real estate the industry that I'm in. But then I'd come up with four other things that I would talk about regularly that had nothing to do with real estate. But people work with people they like and they want to know that they have something in common with you. And so when I'm sharing, every time I make a post at the end, what you'll notice if you go on my Instagram and you look at any of my reels, at the very end, I say, follow Rachel Adams Lee and I tag myself so it makes it real easy for them to just click that follow button for more tips on building a business through social media, all things real estate, and being a working mama of three boys. So that's training the algorithm right there every single time. This is my audience I want. People that are working moms, like I'm a boy mom, like I put that out there, people that are, are realtors or interested in real estate and building a business through social media because I'm also a social media coach, right? So a really good idea is to come up with a little tagline that you put on every single post that you do at the end because you're training the algorithm who you're looking for. Because what the algorithm is doing is it's looking for keywords. Keywords that like, so you know how if you do a reel, you put word, you put captions on the screen, right? The algorithm is scanning that constantly and it's looking for what you're talking about and then it feeds your content in front of the people that are looking for more of what you're looking for. So I get put on the explore page all the time because people are looking for the content that I'm putting out there and I make sure that I do two things. I do things to help realtors build their business, but then I also position myself locally as the buyer and seller expert for Northern California. California. So that's probably the best explanation I've heard of it because I don't, I understand what you're saying about the algorithms because same thing, I have a new grandbaby. And so all of a sudden I started seeing all the, all the baby stuff everywhere because yeah. I was searching for things for my yeah. grandson. Bye. Of course. And so I was like, okay, now I'm going to start ending up with all this baby stuff but it's training it both ways because it's what you're looking for, but you're making sure that your content has yes. information that people are searching for, right? Exactly. I want to put myself in front of my ideal audience. So when they need to buy or sell a house, they're looking at me. And so this even goes for like hashtags. So you could, people are like, do hashtags matter? Or do they get, like people get stuck on it? Hashtags, think of them like keywords. I'm talking about buying a home, selling a home, Sacramento lifestyle. You can do up to 30 hashtags on a post, but geo hashtags are really important. So every time I do my 36 of mine are geo hashtags and I say Sacramento lifestyle, Granite Bay living, I specifically mentioned the cities that I serve and that's called geo hashtags. And that's training your algorithm. When people are looking for real estate in your area, it's going to pop you right in front of them. So I guess I'm not even sure what a geo hashtag is then. Is it's that just where you're taking location? a general hashtag and yes, instead of saying buy a home, it's Sacramento home. It's like Got Sacramento it. lifestyle. Got it. Okay. So the okay. area, the okay. city you serve, and you don't want to be like California because that's too broad. You want to talk about the city that you serve, pick four or five main cities or whatever. If you're just one city, then go deep on it. Exactly. That's fantastic. And so how has this related to your team and what you're doing with your team? Because I know that you Gosh. have said you're rebuilding your team again, right? I, agree. I can't something. even. Okay. I have had a team for almost 11 years. I just celebrated my 12th year this month, actually, in real estate. And I do think of it as a celebration because I think this business is beautiful and it's messy and it's hard and it's chaotic and it's rewarding. And so I love real estate. I really do. I plan on being in it the rest of my life. My grandma was a realtor and so was my dad. And I said, I'd never, ever go into the industry, which I think is funny now. But when I first decided I wanted to launch a team, I went to a real estate convention saw all these agents on stage. And I'm like, the only difference between them is me and they have a team. So I'm going to go home. I'm going to ask all my friends to get the real estate license and come work for me. Now I said, work for me, not with me. First mm -hmm. mistake. 
My first team totally blew up. I didn't know what I was doing. Then I decided if I was going to build a team, I would honestly think of it like, like I would take a piece of paper and I would draw a line down the middle on this side. I'm like, this is what you can expect from me. And on this side, I'm like, and this is what I expect from you. So I got my expectations clear, my systems clear. And I decided, so, so 2023 for us was my most challenging year that I've been, that I've had in real estate since I got in 2012. It, I think for a lot of us, it was a really difficult year. And I, I found myself where I had an eight year and a 10 year agent leave the team. And I had the expenses of a 1.5 million GCI team. And I didn't have the production and I was like, mm-hmm. okay, something has to change total transparency. And I haven't said this publicly, but I actually considered like shutting down the team. Like maybe I just call it and I just focus on real estate coaching because it's going so well, but I get so many referrals through social media. And I was like, that would be really dumb. So instead what we decided to do is to dig our freaking heels in. So this is what it looked like. The first thing we did is we slashed all of our expenses. We literally looked at every expense that we had and was like, what do we absolutely need to keep? And what can we take away? The next thing we did is we took our transaction coordination business and made it with a virtual. So we hired a a virtual assistant to do our TC and we still charge our TC fee. And that's been really helpful for us. The next thing that we did is I recommitted to being in the office. So after pandemic, we all got, I think we got lazy and we got used to working from home, but I've got three kids. And if I'm home, I want to hug my babies and and I'm, I'm just not as focused as if I'm in the office. So I recommitted to to regular business hours. So I'm in the office Tuesday and Thursday, and then the second and fourth Wednesday every month because I do team meetings. That might not sound like a lot, but it's enough and it's consistent and my people know they can count on me. Then I committed to my own personal production. So I've always really been big on social, but I decided to add back in expired calls. I used to have eight years ago, I called expired listings and had really good luck with it. So I'm back on my expired calls now and that's going really well. And then what else did I do? We started to recruit. So I've always recruited for buyers and sellers. I'm sorry. I've always lead generation, lead generated for buyers and sellers. So I started to lead generate for agents. What does this look like? I send out postcards to pre-licensees, new licensees, and other realtors I respect in the industry. I took over career night in my market center. So I run Career Night every single month now. I show up on social media and I talk about our team and I talk about the opportunity and what it looks like to build on our team. Online ads. I do online ads for our team as well. And in the end of November, we had four full-time agents on the team. And now I don't know when this is going to be airing, but we're, this is the beginning. We're in our first quarter and we have 17 full-time agents on the team. I have two interviews next week scheduled. Like my life is now I lead generate for buyers, sellers, and agents. But the thing that I'll tell you that's different is we partnered with a company called Place and they're awesome because you don't have to leave your brokerage and it's a, it's helped support, they help teams support and have more leverage. But like mm-hmm. I can recruit to literally like 85% subsidized healthcare. I couldn't do that before. So now I can talk about coming to the team with healthcare, which is a big deal. But the, the bigger thing is like my system. So I had previously a 90 day onboarding that you'd come on my team. You'd have 90 days to do this training and we'd do stuff together and you'd come on a listing with me. And then after six or eight months, it's working or it's not working. Now I took my 90 day onboarding. I re-recorded everything. I have it like on a super streamlined Excel spreadsheet checklist with milestones and check-ins. And they have two weeks. They have two weeks to do this intense pre-launch is what I call it. And it's two weeks for them, for me to see how they show up and if they're going to do the things they need to do. And two weeks for me to show up and them to see if I do the things that I say I'm going to do. And then after they graduate the two-week pre-launch, they then move into our 86-day agent launch where the average new agent sells 3.4 houses in those 86 days and the average seasoned agent closes 9.8. It's completely changed my business, Marguerite. Like I'm able to bring on a, a volume of agents, but like the culture we have right now is like freaking magical. And the production, like we had nine open houses held last weekend. That's like in my dreams. Like I've never had the culture that we have. I think we have, I think nine different languages spoken right now on the team. 
like the team is we're, we're representing all different cultures, all different languages. We can help so many more people. Like you can feel my excitement. I'm like, yeah, this is freaking cool, but it's taken me 12 years to get here. So let me ask you this, because I think one of the biggest challenges with teams is in bringing on new agents, because yes. I think a lot of agents, a lot of people in general think we don't do a whole lot. So they think, oh my gosh, I can go sell real estate and make a bazillion dollars. And they don't really realize the work that's required. Yeah. So how does that work after a couple of weeks? Are you willing to cut them loose if they don't do what they need yeah. to do? Yeah. We've had three that we call it deselected. It's it really, you really have to have a standard. I think that I have, I like people. I'm a people person and I want to make everybody happy. I actually got last year. This is the fun fact for you. Cause you and I have talked about this before last year. I got therapy to learn how to release people pleasing and this mm. year, my therapy is about learning how to release comparison because this ah. business is rough with comparison yeah. and social media. Like I know that I'm a coach and I should be above it and I'm not. And so there are certain days where I'm like on it and other days where I'm tearing myself down because I'm not as far as someone else and doing this and doing that because I like people and I want to make them happy. I'm like, we can figure it out. It's good. It's not good. You have two weeks. I have two weeks. After two weeks, we talk about it. And the thing is they have to graduate. If they haven't graduated after two weeks, they're not doing the things they need to do. And it's not too much. It's intense, but it's not too much because we just had nine people graduate going through our pre-launch who then got to move on to launch. So okay. the other thing that I will say about it too, it's pre-recorded. So I'm not like in the beginning when I brought someone on my team, I'd spend six full days with them and I'd go through everything there's to know about real estate but I don't have six days anymore. I've got three kids and I've got four companies. So everything's done through video. And what I love about it is it's self-paced. So like they get, this is their first tip of learning how to show up. And then the other thing, which this has actually in interviews, literally stopped people in their tracks. They have to bring 200 people on a database to our team before they can join. 200 oh, wow. people. And they're like, I don't know 200 people. I'm like, yes, you do. I don't like we've had stay at home moms that are like, there's no way I can do it. And then by the, that evening she sent us, I'm at 37 the next morning, I'm at 104 the next day. It's, it becomes this like exciting challenge. Cause I'm like there it's, you have people who you've gone to school with, you have friends, your parents have friends, your boyfriend, your husband, your sister, like you have them. I'm not asking you to call them and ask them for business. I'm asking you to think about people who like you, who love you, who'd want to refer business to you if they knew someone. And I right. think that the shift in that conversation is really cool. So how did you come up with that checklist that they go through? Place has an 86 day launch that they do that we get to help leverage by being a part of them. So I use that as my initial framework. And there was another guy who named Jay White, who did like a version of a pre-launch and I took his and I took it all apart. And then I took my 90 day and I re-recorded everything and I rebranded it because I, the brokerage that I'm with is red and I can't stand the red. So I was like, I'm taking all red out of my colors. Like I want neutral. I want to be like, I just brands matter to me. And so I intentionally rebuilt the whole thing and it took two months. And so when I joined place there, they have, you do this and you go here and you do these zooms and there's this whole launch thing. And I was like, thank you so much for your opinion. I'm going to focus on this because it's so freaking easy to get distracted right now. It is so easy to get distracted. And my, the hardest thing is when you have a team and you pour into these people and they're like, thanks for everything you taught me. And then they leave. It's so hard. And so I had to get to a place where I could provide enough value that they didn't want to go anywhere. They were like this culture, this production, this energy, this, these leads. So we provide, we literally are like, okay, I have this like pie chart and I'm like split it down the middle. I'm going to give you the training, the accountability and the coaching on your side. So you can close at least 12 transactions a year. And I go through with them on their pie chart, what they're going to do. And then when you're showing up on your side and you do the things you need to do, I'm going to release my side. My side is online leads, client events, my client referrals, right? And from that, you'll get another 12 deals. And so then Every agent, we're helping them close 12 to 24 deals and it's changed the game. Like it's, I'm so excited where this year is going to be, especially after the beep show that was last year. <laughs> it's funny because I was telling, I've said this a lot over the last few months is that there's an entire generation of real estate agents and consumers who've never lived through a down market. I just mm -hmm. celebrated 30 years in real estate in December. Yeah. So 
Congrats. Crazy. Yeah, they have a new like, MLM. I feel like I'm going to say congratulations and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they have a new master's club has a new like presidential thing now, right? If oh. you're like 25 years. So I actually okay. got that this year. Get it, girl. And, but the funny thing is, is that you have this whole generation of people who've only seen rising values since 2010 and low interest rates. Yeah. And then all of a sudden interest rates went up and everyone was like, oh my gosh, what are we like? Everyone freaked out. And I'm like, that's how, I, that's the first 20 years of my business. That's yeah. all we had was yeah. like seven, eight percent interest rates. So it's been a real adjustment. And there's been a lot of stuff that have said 40% of these agents aren't going to make it over the next couple of years. And so it's inspiring to see what you're doing to change that trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. And like, what can we do to help these agents for those of us that oh, are yeah. veterans that have been around for a while? to not only just survive, but thrive. Because yeah. what I know yeah. from 30 years is great agents do well in any market. Yep. But you have to be willing to shift and you have to be willing to change and you have to be willing to do the work. And sometimes the work's way harder than it is. Like last year was rough on the majority of agents. We still did pretty well, but the majority of agents struggled last year, mostly because yeah. a lot of them never learned the basics. They never learned the important stuff. There's that saying, most agents get in, they piss off their family and friends and get out. Yeah, totally. I think like there, this industry, you have to be willing to ride the wave. If you really want this to be your career, you're going to have good months. You're going to have bad months. I really like to look at the year. I have an annual goal and then I break it down by quarterly and then I break it down by monthly and then weekly. But I'm still like being a working mom every single Sunday, we're looking at my calendar and we're like, first thing I do is I'm like, what can I remove? Not right. like how busy am I? What can I remove? What do I not need to do? What can I move to a Zoom that doesn't need to be in person? Because we're, it's really easy to just say yes to everything. But like I am pulled in a lot of different directions and now having all these agents, like I was telling my husband, I went to the gym this morning. I am committed to getting myself back in a healthy place after having these littles. And I went to the gym this morning and I walked out and I had seven messages from agents on the team who all needed something. And I was right. like, okay, this is new. And this is okay. And so then what I do is I go back and I set the expectation with my team that when they reach out to me, I'll be back in them with, I'll be back in touch with them within two hours. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to tell them I'm at the gym from this time to this time. And he's nope, don't give them your schedule. That's too much for them to keep track of. Just set the expectation that you'll go back to them within a couple hours. And I was like, okay, because it's just, we are not saving lives. We are not brain surgeons. We're selling houses. Our clients make us feel like everything's an emergency when in fact, like, it's just DocuSign. We'll figure it out. But I think it, there's just, there's a lot of pressure on us. And so learning and understanding how to really navigate this business, it's a whole different ball game. How has it worked with working with your husband? Cause so as I had a brokerage for 22 years and worked yeah. and my husband worked, we worked side by side, but we learned pretty quickly to stay in our corners. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Like yeah. these were his responsibilities and the things that he needed to do. And then this is what yeah. I needed to do. And he didn't get into my stuff and I didn't get into his stuff, but yeah. you guys work really closely together and have for a while. How did that come about and how has that worked out? That's a good question. I'm sure my answer would be a little different than his. <laughs> so when I met Ryan, we met on Tinder, a mechanical engineer. So he was selling commercial air conditioning systems and he did really well. He did like multiple six figures. Like he did super well financially. But when we went on our honeymoon, he was like, I wish we could stay a couple extra days. And I said, we me too. And I was like, I can, because my schedule is flexible, but he was a nine to five and he had to show up. And so it planted this little seed for us of what would life need to look like so that we could work together. And when we came home, he was listening to me on a coaching call with my business coach and we hung up and he was like, do you just talk numbers with him? And I was like, no, we were talking about door knocking. And he was like, yeah, but if you door knock this many doors with this percentage of conversion, you make this much money. And I was like, you are now our productivity coach. Like, welcome <laughs> to the team. And he had a draw with his company and he said, I need to make at least 10,000 a month to consider quitting my job. And I was like, okay. And at the same time, we had been presented an opportunity. I'd never done network marketing. I thought it was super slimy and I was like, not about it. But I was presented an opportunity that I said no to for seven months in a hair care company. 
And I was like, that's weird. I'm a realtor. I'm not going to sell hair care. But at the same time, my hair was falling out. It was thinning. It wasn't holding color. And I was like, I'll try the product. So I ended up trying it, loving it, and decided that I have no problem sharing like a movie that I love. So why not share this other company? And Ryan was like, we'll do it together. So we hadn't had, because real estate was mine, then this could be ours. So we started doing that together. Within three months, we were making 10000 a month. So then he quit his job. And then... We've been that company now for six years. We made six figures every year in that company. So that was cool to have that on the side, but real estate's always been my primary. And so what happened was I was like, why don't we do this together? Why don't we run the team together? And we added him to the corporation documents. And I thought that was really big of me to do. (laughs) And then we started working together and every idea he had, he would start talking and my insides would tighten. And every change he wanted to make, my insides would tighten. And I was like, let me tell you why that's not going to work. And that's not a good idea because. And so what I started to do is I was slowly just taking his man card. Like it was not, it wasn't good. And he was like, why did you want me to come over if every idea I have, you're going to shoot down? And I was like, oh crap, this isn't going well. And we believe in being proactive in our marriage and in our business. And so we immediately signed up for our marriage counseling. And we got some really good advice, which is sounds like how you run your world. She was like, okay, Rachel, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Ryan, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Great. Stay the hell out of each other's sandboxes. Yeah. And it's been awesome ever since. So I really just had to learn. I'm a control freak. So I tend to run and I ran the show myself for several years before he came in the picture. But what I realized is if I gave him an opportunity to shine in his strength zone, like truly every company we have is better because he's a part of it. So he runs the back end operations. He makes sure all the systems go. He handles the operations team. He's the director of operations for our company and the productivity coach. And so he helps the agents achieve their goals. He listens really well. He understands the numbers. He talks to them about their production. Then I'm all sales. So I teach them how to go on the listings. I'm going with them. I'm teaching them how to work with the buyers, the scripts, the objection handlers, writing the contracts. So I'm that side, but he's all the systems on the back end. And it's, it's so fun, but I'm like insanely obsessed with him. He's my favorite person. Like I'm on a listing. I, I leave that. I've been with him all day. And then I go on a listing appointment. As soon as I'm done, I call him on the way home to drive home to him. But when you get to find, when you meet your person, it's, you want to. I think I sent you my book too, didn't I? Did I send you my book? Yes. A hundred things I love about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that that was helped us figure out how to stay in our corners and stay in the area. Super different. Oh, we're very different. Yes and no. If you look on the the disc profile, I'm like a 99D, like the, Mm -hmm. and, but, but Joe is much more the, he's a high I, but he also has some of that like analytical stuff, the S and the yeah. C in him, which kind of surprised me when we did the disc profile test. He's retired now. So he does stand up comedy and yeah, has fun with that. So he's completely out of the business at this point. Okay. And, and which you is still, are you still in production or do you have a team or do you just mo- mostly run like your EXP group? I have all of the above. So I run a team with my business partner, Mitzi De La Cruz, who's now in Columbia, oh, Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. So Mitzi and I, she's in Columbia. I'm here in California. So I still handle a lot of her California business. And then we're building a cool. team in Columbia. Awesome. And then I have my EXP organization and then my podcast. And I'm doing a little bit of coaching and putting okay. together some products, more product based. Products, Um, that is one thing we're super heavily leaning into this year because like webinars and online, like digital products, like a $4.25 billion industry right now. And so we're one of the things I'm doing. So I committed October 1st. I was like, I'm so tired of feeling the way I feel. It was the same day I partnered with Place. And I was like, I'm going to change my health. And I have been on every freaking diet under the sun. I have tried all the things. And there was this woman in my brokerage and she went from a three X to a two and not a two X, but a two. And I was Mm. like, Holy crap, what did you do? And she's, Oh, I hired a nutritionist and a trainer. And I'm like, like nobody wants that answer. And then she was like, (laughs) we want the easy button. Totally. I'm like, can I just get the pill? Thanks. And then she was like, do you want me to send you my meal plan? And I was like, sure. So she sends me her meal plan. And I thought she sent me a mistake because it didn't make sense to me in the beginning, but essentially you're eating small meals more often and they're clean, which 
sounds simple, but right. I in from October 1st to December 30th, I lost 30 pounds. The wow. first 60 days, all I did was focus on nutrition. And then the last 30, I added in workouts and I've continued now. And I'm five feet tall and I'm down 37 pounds. And I That's finally amazing. feel like I, I feel so much better, but I feel like I've like finally figured out because I was raised, unfortunately, with some body image issues and food have a really yeah. unhealthy relationship with food. And this is like the first time in 39 years, I feel like free like of that. And so I'm turning it into a digital product. I'm literally, it's, it's, that's the thing I had next to me because I was working on it last night. But actually, truth be told, I made Ryan work on it on date night because I'm a crappy <laughs> mean lady. But I literally am doing like, okay, this is limiting beliefs around like weight loss and body image. This is mindset. This is the nutrition. This is the water. And I think it's important to be like, even with real estate or any of this, just to be honest about it. Like, I'm going to tell you what you should drink every day in water. And I don't think I've done it a single day. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell you what you should do, but it's, it, it doesn't matter if you're selling houses or you're selling socks or you're just trying to be the best mom. It's you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. It's all beautiful. 100%. It's all messy. It's, but it's a journey. Yeah. I'd love, I'd love to offline. Maybe we can chat a little bit more about products. Cause I'd love to get talk a little bit about that. And, oh, I'm uh, totally down. Yeah. I have a whole yeah. plan for that whole side. Yeah, help. that would be amazing. So tell us about the product that you did create, though, as we wrap up today. We'll yeah. talk a little bit about your social media, your reels. Tell us about yeah. that. So well, I've been watching you with that. It's been so fun to watch. Video is the number one thing the algorithm favors above all else. And I have realtors reach out to me all the time. And they're like, Rachel, can you run my social media for me? I'm like, no, because your people want you. But what I decided I would do is I would create, we, we launched a company called Get Social Leverage. And one of the products that we offer is the weekly reels. And so what it is, every week I pick a reel that's trending in real estate and I record the example reel. Then what you do as the client is you, I say, hey, I want you to walk towards the camera smiling for seven seconds on your cell phone talking and you walk past it. Then you send that to my team. Then I edit it. I put the captions on the screen, like the hook. I put the call to action in there. So you get your hook, your call to action. Then I write your actual caption. So I write the post for you. Because one of my strengths with getting over 100 referrals is conversion. I know how to convert a client. So I write this. I, I edit it. I put the captions on. I write the actual post for you. Then I give you your trending audio as well as your hashtags and your geo hashtags. And it's so plug and play. Every single week you get a reel. What's cool is I also have tips on how to get confidence on camera, the equipment you need to use, and the results are my favorite part because we have clients that are like, my engagement on social media is up 415%, 197%. Like I just got my first referral from my reel. And that's the stuff for me where I'm like, heck yes, because I know it works for me because I'm consistent with it. But when I can so many realtors don't know what to do and they don't know how to do it. So this took it from that. And that's really cool. So we'll put the links to that program and her other social media links in the show notes below. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's been really great to watch. I know I've been really fascinated by it and paying that's close fun. attention. I'm like, well, I'm going to wait and talk to her. And it's been really exciting to watch and see. And I do agree. So many are struggling I know. in those areas yeah. and they really need help with it. And for me, I'm like, oh, do I just go back to old school what I did or do I try to learn the new stuff? Sometimes it's a little bit overwhelming for some of us who are a little more advanced in age. <laughs> <laughs> but I did do in the month of November, I made a commitment to do it was my birthday month. So I made a commitment to ev post something every single day for 30 days. And it was the first time I'd ever done it. And I made it through the whole month. But then I was like, OK, that's done. Now what? <laughs> yeah. You're like, whoo. I know there's some, and you know, the thing too, is I feel like there's a lot of pressure to show up every day. I don't show up every day. Like yeah. I, what I did the other day with one of my agents, as we went to a new build community with two outfits, I recorded 15 reels, me typing on, I brought my computer. I brought an empty coffee mug in my purse. I sat at their kitchen, like sipping coffee. I typed at their desk. I did all these different videos, but I got 15 pieces of content done in one day in three hours. And then I can use that for the next month. Yeah. So there is a way to be more efficient with this. And that's what I help with. I also have a, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching where I audit people's social media and help give them a game plan too. So there's all kinds of things. That's fantastic. This has been so awesome getting to know yeah. you a little bit better and hearing about all the fun, exciting stuff. I think my favorite video you did was the one with Henry where he was 
talking. Oh my gosh, when he was a realtor. Because I have this picture of my son, Jake. I should have pulled it out. I have this picture of my son, Jake, when he was about, I don't know, two maybe. Yeah. And back when you used to be able to go to the place at the mall and get the pictures yeah. done. <laughs> and with his little suit, he had his little tie on and his little yeah. hat. He looked like his dad because Joe used to always dress to the nines. Yeah. And it's such a cute picture. But none of my kids are interested at all in real estate. None of them. Okay. Have zero interest. I'm like, all right, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You say that now. I was like, the reason I didn't want to do real estate though is like no one talked about work-life balance when I was a kid and my dad would like miss sh dinner because he was doing showings and I was like, I don't want that life. And yeah. so I, he was a great dad, but there were certain times where he just missed stuff or he'd have to do a call and like, I just, but I, what I've done is I've worked my world around my kids. I'm like, Hey, I've got an appointment from six to nine tonight. I'll can call. And, yeah. and my appointment is dinner with my family. They don't need yeah. to know what it is. And I think that if you tell people your schedule up front, they're really respectful of it. I haven't worked Sundays for the majority of my career yeah. because my voicemail says I work Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5.30. I work evenings yep. and Saturdays by appointment. I take Sundays off to be with my family. Yep. And I find that the majority of people are really respectful of that. Obviously there's exceptions. You have an out of town client or things like that happen. But yeah. for the majority of my career, I've not worked Sundays and I'm pretty proud of that fact. That's awesome. I love and it. I think it's possible for people like your family's got to take precedence. You'll Agreed. wish that you did if you didn't. So. Totally. Yep. Rachel, thank you so much for being with us today yeah. on Real Estate Real World. You are yes. definitely the real world and the real deal. So thank you, friend. I I'm appreciate honored you. to know you. Me too. And call you friend and I'm grateful that you're here. So thank thanks you. again. Thank you everybody for joining us on Real Estate Real World, where we get to talk to all the cool people and we make sure that we help you have the tools that you need in the business world right now. So thank you so much for joining us. Go out and make it a great day. Thank you for joining us today on Real Estate Real World, where we talk with masters and leaders in the real estate industry and beyond on how we can raise the bar in our industry. Please subscribe over on iTunes, and while you're there, be sure to give us a review. Your reviews encourage us and help others to find our podcast for show notes and hot topics on what's going on right now in our real estate industry. Also, hop on over to www.realestaterealworld.com and add your name to our email to get early advance notice of upcoming podcasts. Thanks again for listening and go out there and be a part of the elite masterclass and raising the bar on the real estate industry.